welcome back to part three of our low back pain series. Thanks for joining us again. My name is Charlie Swingle. I'm a physical therapist here with The Recovery Project, and I'll be running you through our part three of our low back pain series today. So a lot of the exercises that we're going to be completing today are going to be a trunk and kind of core stability focus and uh, working on, again, that stability and strength through your trunk. These are going to be a little bit more difficult than some of the activities that you performed in part one and part two. Um, but I'll go through some kind of variations that we can do and uh, we'll get started. So what we're going to do first here is we're going to get into a four point position. So in that four point position is, you know, when we did our, our kind of our, our cat camel where we were trying to kind of find what our neutral position was, that's what I want you to do now. So I don't want us to be too extended here with too much curvature in the low back and I also don't want us to be too flexed here. So kind of try to find that pelvic neutral. Once you feel like you have a nice flat low back position, what I want you to do is hold that position. From this four point position, we're gonna start with alternating upper extremity lifts, okay? So what that's gonna be is one, two, and we're gonna do 10 each side, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now the key here is again to maintain that flat low back. So when I'm lifting up, I don't want to see my back go into any extension, you know, or lose any of that type of stabilization we have through the lumbar spine there. So the key there is to keep a nice tight core. Again, like we've done in the past, kind of pulling your belly button towards your spine, keeping everything activated, and then you're going to go into your alternating lifts. Again, we're shooting for 10 each side, two to three sets, okay? The next activity that we're gonna do is we're gonna just progress it a little bit into our lower extremities. So instead of doing alternating upper extremity lifts, we're gonna go into alternating lower extremity lifts. Now this one again, we wanna to try to keep our low back and pelvis as stable as possible. So we don't wanna get a bunch of extension when we're trying to lift up our leg and get a lot of curvature into that back. So again, we're gonna find pelvic neutral, bring that belly button towards your spine, Keeping the core nice and tight, and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good, and again, as best you can, try to keep that back nice and flat. The next activity that we're gonna go into after the alternating lower extremity raises, and again, those are gonna be two to three sets of that 10 each side, is we're gonna go into a, what's called a bird dog. So we're kind of bringing everything together here where we're gonna go alternating upper extremity raises with alternating lower extremity raises. So I'll kind of show you what that looks like here. Same principles again, where we're maintaining that neutral spine position and trying not to get too much rotation through the pelvis or flexion extension through the lumbar spine here. So what it'll look like here is we're gonna go one, back down, two, back down, three, back down. And as, you're noticing, or as you're doing these, you're gonna notice that these are a little bit more challenging because we have less points of contact here. And it's gonna take a little bit more to keep yourself balanced. Six. What I want you to focus on trying not to do 
is when you're coming up with that upper extremity extension and that lower leg lift as well, try not to tilt or teeter anyway. Think like you have a vase of water on your back and it's a table and you don't want to spill it. And here for these, we're going to shoot for six each side, so a total of 12. And we're going to look for two to three sets. Good. So that's some of our four point strengthening activities. Next, what we're going to move into is again some core and some stability type work. And the next one's going to be a plank. Some of you may have done these in the past, some of you may have not, but I'll kind of go through some of the main points of what we want to look for in a plank. So into our plank position, we can start in four point. We're going to go down onto our elbows. And when we're going down under our elbows, I'll show you here. I want you to try your best to keep your arms straight. A lot of people will sometimes put their hands together like so. I want you to try to keep your arms straight if possible here. <clears throat> so we're going to go up into a plank position and from here we want to keep a nice straight line from our head to our tailbone here. So I don't want you cranking your head up, I just want you a nice neutral spine position and we don't want to let the hips sag in or have it touch too high up here. We want to be nice and neutral. Now if this is too challenging for you, we have two options that we can move into. First is a tall plank position which is what I recommend for many of us to start off with instead of going on to the elbows here. So what we'll go into is a tall plank position where we're holding ourselves like we're going to do a push-up. From here we're going to hold ourselves again keeping the head to tail nice and aligned in a neutral position so not letting the hips sink in, not going up too high here, nice even position here. And we're going to hold goal here is hold for about 20 seconds. If that's too difficult, you just modify it a little bit. You can drop down to 10 seconds. Again, if this is too difficult for you, we can drop down to our knees and extend the lever a little bit. Bring our hands out a little bit. And we can hold here in this position. So again, our options are from our knees, which will shorten the vector and make it a little bit more doable for us to hold this position. And then we can go into a tall plank. And if that's not too bad for you, we can go into on our elbows and up into a plank position here. And again, just not letting the hips dip in too much, not keep them too high up. And you want to hold for about 20 seconds. And again, if 20 seconds is too difficult for you, then what we'll want to do is start with 10 seconds and work your way up, do a few sets. With the plank hold, there's really not a set number that you have to get to. It's just something that we want to build up our strength and our kind of our uh, our endurance with, and it'll help with our core stability. So we just did a forward plank or a tall plank. Now what we're going to go into is a side plank. So with the side plank, I'm going to face the camera here. So the easiest one to do would be on a shortened vector. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop ourselves up onto our sides here. And you want to feel your lateral side that's closest to the ground working here. With your elbow, I want you to push the ground away, and with your knees, push the ground away. And again, you'll hold here 10, 20 seconds, whatever you feel like is challenging for you to start. And then you would come back down. And you want to make sure for this one, you're getting both sides. So again, shortened vector. Coming up on the knees, with the knees, you're pushing the ground away, pushing the ground away, and trying to keep this portion activated here. Good. 
Good. You might find these are one of the more difficult ones we're doing. So, if that's not too bad for you, you say, oh, that's, that's, that's uh, kind of a breeze for me. I'm not feeling too much difficulty with that. Then what we can do is we can go into a longer vector. So that would be coming up on the feet. So you can either stack the feet and go one in front of the other or behind if you'd like. But I'm going to stack the feet here and you can see I'm struggling with this. So this is a difficult one here. And again, you want to push the ground away, working this lateral side that's closest to the ground here. Again, 10 to, second, uh, 10 to 20 second hold. And then you would come down and go on to the other side. And you would do the same thing. Where you're lifting up into that side plank position. And again, same thing with the plank or tall plank, whichever variation you find difficult or an appropriate amount of difficulty for you initially. 10 to sec 20 second hold, if those are a breeze, of course you can raise it up a little bit more. And you're shooting for two to three sets of that. So after the side plank, the last activity that we'll be performing is gonna be back into that plank position, but we're gonna make it even a little bit more difficult if you feel that the initial just plank hold is, is not too too challenging for you. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is again, this can be performed from the tall plank position or from, from a lower plank, but what we're going to do is in the tall plank position, we're going to just go plank with the hip extension, which we did at the beginning of this series when we're in four point. So again, you want to squeeze that glute and bring that leg up. So you'll go with five each side for a total of 10 and three sets of that. Again, from the tall plank position will be a little bit less challenging as opposed to if you're in a low plank here and you're going into those hip extensions that way. Okay, so that'll wrap up part three of our low back pain series. Thanks for joining us again. Be sure to check back in for part four, which will be a progression from parts one, two, and three. And basically what we'll be doing is we'll be doing some more dynamic and more functional activities in a standing position. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again soon.